Hello and welcome to this short video about planetary fields and escape velocities. So we're talking about planetary, planetary fields and here we need to think about the fact that they are radial fields. So they're all focused in, all our uh, lines, uh, field lines, all pointed to a center of mass. Okay. We understand that a planet is actually a huge mass and isn't all focused on one solitary point. Those radial lines, uh, when we're looking out, behave just like that. We're going to think about how this has an impact on us as a whole, and also think about what it really means if we go below the surface. So if we think about uh, that first statement, so what we can see here is um, we have got the graph showing uh, the gravitational field strength as felt by force of gravity and we can see that on the earth's surface uh, at r and then we've got a typical g now as we move away from the earth's surface uh, it drops down it drops down in quite an interesting way if we go twice the distance from the center to the surface of the earth or any other planet then what happens is that the g that we feel will be one quarter of the original strength and if we go three times uh, the distance from the sensor to the original surface, uh, then we find that they get one ninth of the original strength. Now, the interesting thing is if we go inside the planet, so to speak, now what happens is some interesting maths happens here because when you're going inside, it means that there's less and less mass uh, below you. And that decrease in mass actually causes that really nice uh, straight linear relationship back down to zero as if we were traveling through to the center of planet Earth. Traveling through the center of planet Earth is one thing we want to do. Another thing we want to do is escape planet Earth. So we're going to talk about escape speeds today. And this is where we have to overcome uh, the force of gravity. Obviously, we can never do that and never reach infinity, but we can hypothesize about it. So the escape speed is the speed required for any projectile to leave the Earth's gravitational attraction. That means to get to infinity, okay? And therefore there'd be zero um, uh, potential. If the potential of the Earth's surface is V, and this is V is equal to minus G uh, times by the mass of the Earth divided by the uh, radius of the Earth, then the change in energy as we get to infinity is going to work like this. If we're moving an object where m is the mass of the projectile, then what we can do is for the amount of energy to be gained for the projectile, it must have an equal amount of kinetic energy. So therefore half mv squared is going to be equal to the amount of energy required to uh, get out of uh, the volt, the potential which we had. So here I can rearrange for V. And then if I note the fact that actually little g is equal to gm over radius of the earth squared, it means that I can simplify that to the velocity required is the square root of two times uh, the force of g uh, multiplied by the radius of the earth. Now I've got an escape velocity. As it happens when I think about the energy, the resultant total gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy at a large infinite distance must be at least zero. So thinking about all these features, can you find the velocity of a tennis ball must be thrown vertically upwards to escape from the earth? knowing that g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, the mass of the Earth is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the radius is 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters at the Earth's surface. Pause for a moment. 11 kilometers per second is what you should have calculated there. Now, these escape velocities uh, are different for every single planet we've got, all dependent on the amount of mass they have. But they can all be calculated in exactly the same way. Now, this is kind of interesting. Uh, there are some implications, of course. 
um, we can't actually really truly escape from a gravitational field. It's infinite. Uh, so we go to the point uh, where we're thinking that there's very limited impact on that, where the change becomes basically nothing. And this is some of the reason why some planets have atmospheres and some do not. So it's very much down to that escape velocity. If the escape velocity uh, is too low, those lighter molecules, which have high average speeds, are more likely to reach escape speeds and therefore be lost in the atmosphere. Let's think about black holes here. Black holes is the extreme case. Now how a black hole works, a black hole is the remains of a star that's collapsed on its own gravitational force. And the escape speed for a black hole is so large due to the concentration of this large mass into a sphere of a very small radius. And therefore the escape speed exceeds the speed of light, so therefore radiation cannot escape and it appears black. So actually a black hole follows the same ideas about escape velocity. And what we have here is a critical radius. This is known as the Schwarzschild radius. And that's the radius at which the escape speed is equal to the speed of light. And it's a kind of an interesting uh, feature. Uh, and this is also known as the event horizon, the point of no return. Um, and that's the limit of how close you can get to a black hole and still escape in theory. There's also a bunch of reasons why you'd be ripped apart before then, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Okay, so that's my conversation about uh, planetary motion.